Chapter 34 With the Newcomers from the Umbral Led by firm-handed workers, the packs of dogs stopped beside them. Within minutes, we were all braving the enormous entrance corridors of the Chambers of Rectification. Attendants were hurrying about. A few of the patients were being led inside by force. Not only were Narcissa, Salsustio, and others throwing themselves into the toil with fraternal love, but the Samaritans were also mobilizing all their efforts in their eagerness to help. Some of the patients were behaving humbly and with resignation, whereas others complained loudly. I too eagerly joined in the work and noticed that an elderly woman was having a difficult time trying to get down from the last cart. When I came near her, she exclaimed in alarm, Take pity, Sonny. Help me, for God's sake. I was interested and approached her. Good heavens, she exclaimed, crossing herself. Thanks to divine providence, I got out of purgatory. Oh, what wicked devils tortured me there. What a hell. But angels of the Lord finally came. I was extremely curious as I helped her down. This was the first time I had heard reference to hell and purgatory from someone who seemed calm and reasonable. I let my curiosity get the best of me, and I asked, So, have you come from far away? Speaking like that, I was putting on an air of profound fraternal interest like I used to do on earth, completely forgetting Laura's wise recommendations for the moment. Noticing my interest, the poor creature began to explain. Very far indeed. On earth, my son, I was a very good woman. I did a lot of work for charity and said my prayers with sincere devotion. But what can one do against the wiles of Satan? Upon leaving the world, I found myself surrounded by monstrous beings which dragged me with them into a real whirlwind. At first, I implored the protection of the celestial archangels, but those hellish spirits kept me prisoner nonetheless. However, I never lost hope of being rescued at any moment, because I had left some money to have monthly masses done on my behalf. Yielding to the noxious habit of making inquiries about matters that were none of my business, I insisted, That is so interesting. Didn't you try to find out the reason for your stay in those regions? Absolutely not, she replied, crossing herself again. Like I already told you, I did my best to be a good religious woman while on earth. But you know that nobody is free of sin. Although my fortune provided me with a peaceful life, my slaves often caused disorder and contention. And from time to time I had to have them punished. My overseers noticed every little misbehavior, so I had to give such orders every day. It wasn't rare for some Negro to die at the whipping post as a warning to the others, and in order to keep the peace around the house, I was sometimes obliged to sell slave mothers, separating them from their children. I felt the sting of my conscience on those occasions, but I confessed every month when Father Amancio visited the plantation, so I was free of those venial sins because having received absolution in the confessional and having taken communion by eating the sacred bread, I felt renewed in my duties toward the world and God. I was shocked with her story and began to instruct her. My sister, that kind of spiritual peace was false. The slaves were also our brothers. In the eternal father's eyes, the children of servants are the same as the children of masters. At my words, she stamped her foot as if she knew better and said, irritated, impossible. Slaves are slaves. If that weren't so, religion would teach us otherwise. If there were slaves in the houses of bishops, why shouldn't there be any on our plantations? Who would work the land if not them? Believe me, it was an honor for them to live in my slaves' quarters. On my plantation, slaves never came to the guests' courtyard except to carry out my orders. Our virtuous father, Amancio, once told me at confession that Africans are the worst creatures in the world, born exclusively to serve God in bondage. So do you think I would have any scruples in dealing with such creatures? Have no doubt about it. Slaves are wicked beings, the children of Satan. I sometimes admire my own patience with which I used to tolerate that sort of folk. Let me tell you, I almost left my body unexpectedly from shock over the prince's decree setting those hoodlums free. That all happened many years ago, but I could still remember it perfectly. I had been sick for many days, and when Father Amancio came from town with the news, I suddenly got worse. How could we go on living with those criminals at large? Of course, they would want to enslave us in turn. 
Wouldn't it be preferable to die rather than to serve the likes of them? I remember I had a hard time making my confession. I received the priest's comforting words, but it seemed that all demons are also African. They spied on me all the time, and I have been obliged to suffer their presence until today. And when did you arrive? In May of 1888. I experienced a strange sensation of amazement. With dim eyes, the old woman gazed at the horizon and said, It's possible that my nephews forgot to pay for the masses, although I left it clearly specified in my will. I was about to respond in order to instruct her about the higher spiritual spheres, to provide her with new ideas of fraternity and faith, when Narcissa approached and said kindly, Andre, my friend, have you forgotten that we are rendering relief and aid to ill and disturbed spirits? What good will all this information be to her? Demented individuals will talk incessantly, and whoever listens to them is wasting their spiritual effort and may be no less crazy than they. These words were spoken with such kindness that I flushed with shame and lacked the courage to reply. Don't worry about it, the nursery marked gently. Let's get back to helping our deranged friends. The old woman seemed worried and asked, But do you really think I'm one of them? Displaying her excellent psychological skills, Narcissa looked at her kindly and explained, Of course not, my friend, I didn't say that. Even so, I think you must be worn out. Your purgatorial effort lasted a very long time. You're right, you're right, agreed the newcomer from the umbral. You can't imagine what I have suffered, tortured by those demons. The poor creature was about to begin the whole story over again, but teaching me how to behave in such circumstances, Narcissa cut her short. Don't talk about evil. I already know all about your bitter and painful experiences. Calm down and be assured that I will assist you very soon. At the same instant, she humbly spoke to one of the attendants. You, Zenobio, please go to the female department and tell Nemesia that I would like her to come and take one more sister to the treatment beds.